We started with biocontrols five plus years ago, working with potted mums, as well as in our bedding plants, we've had issues with our ivy geraniums. We have really committed to doing the bio program with poinsettia because there really are no effective chemicals for white fly control for one of the uh, biotypes of white fly that we're facing. We've had some failure and some success, so it seems that it's the right way to go to effectively control white fly. The first time that we really put a biocontrol program in place was uh, 2004 with our poinsettia crop. We had white fly that we could not kill anymore with pesticides. They were completely resistant and we lost a large part of the crop. It was a very expensive situation. The owners, they gave me the opportunity to work a whole crop with biological control and that was a big success. I think we had the cleanest poinsettia crop in the province of Ontario. Since 2005, we had very good results with biological control. Consistently clean crops, even when the plant material that came in was not very clean, we were still able to manage to get the crop through to the other end without having to resort to pesticides. I thought there'd be a recipe or a strategy that we could implement from the biological companies, but found that they did not really have a strategy for flowering potted plants or bedding plants. They were more comfortable in the vegetable industry. So we had to develop our own strategy specific to flowering plants. The biological control program starts with monitoring to find out where you have pests, the, the level of the uh, population to determine what strategy that you're going to employ. The learning curve is one where you uh, implement some programs and continually review and assess your progress and see how the program is working. It's a paradigm shift on how we work with pest control. With pesticides, you wait until the pest shows up on the crop or on the yellow sticky card and then you apply the pesticide and hopefully it kills the pest. We call it spray and pray. With biological control, you have to anticipate all of the possible pests that can come in on that crop and you have to put the biological control agents, the systems, into place before the pest actually shows up on your monitoring system. You have to build in an ecosystem out in the greenhouse. All the money for that biological control program has to be spent at the beginning of the crop because you have to put the controls into place before the pest arrives and that is new. I think what we're doing is trying to use products and uh, amounts that will combat heavy populations, knowing that we'll have success when we have populations that are much lower. And when I talk to other growers and they say, well, look, your costs per plant are, are very, very high, I point out with the MUM program that we're doing, our discards or our losses due to pest problems have been fairly high. And we've seen the success that we've had in those plants with the bio program. So I think overall, when you take a look on balance as to what we've spent, I think it's very, very cost effective. And it is also very effective in eliminating those pests. In terms of cost, it's considerably less than we used to spend on pesticides, but that has shifted to the biocontrol agents. The most expensive part of pest control is the pest control that doesn't work. Towards the end of the crop, we'll take a look to see if there's a population of white fly that we need to combat. If we do, there's an insecticide that we can use at that point that will allow us to clean up the crop. When you're running a biocontrol system, it does not mean that you're not spraying anymore. There is a number of pests for which we really don't have effective controls and we have to intervene with pesticides. I talk to some growers and they will tell me that they find it a waste of money. You know, first I put the biologicals out in the greenhouse and then I have to spray, so I may as well save that and just spray. But it's, it's very important to understand that it's, it's not really a loss because it helps a very successful system become even more successful. But you cannot go the other way around. You cannot rescue a crop where conventional pest control has failed with biological control agents. That doesn't work. You know, it's much easier to apply a bio 
than it is to put on a spray suit. Just about anybody can apply it. People don't need special training. They don't need to come in after hours. We don't have to close off greenhouses anymore. We can leave them open. We can apply these products with people in the greenhouse. We don't have to lock down the greenhouse for 12 or 24 or 48 hours after an application. Uh, the staff certainly like the, uh, the idea that we're not um, employing insecticides. They feel safer. They are in tune with what we're doing. A lot more loyalty. There is a lot more passion. It saves us a lot of grief. It saves us a lot of money. The plants, I think they seem to uh, enjoy the bio program. The, uh, the insecticides and fungicides that we're using are hard on plants. It's a learning curve, but you know, we, we, we got to start somewhere. The earlier we start with it, the easier it is for us to work ourselves into the thinking that is necessary to make those systems a success. And I think that in the future it is basically a given. We are going to work with biological controls. I think the key to success is to make sure that the ownership of the greenhouses are part of the process when implementing, that you pay uh, close attention to what your program is, implement it, monitor to see how effective the program is being. Don't, at the first sign of an insect, race to the chemical shed to pull out some insecticides to battle the problem. So it's going to take a couple of years to implement, but I think with some of the programs that have been developed, I think you should be able to have success almost immediately.